let's say you need to save some battery life. There's an application called Settings. Every phone will have this, unlike files. If you press Settings, the Settings window will appear. Again, it takes, it takes some time to populate. All right, right here on the screen, I know that I have airplane mode turned off, only on the phones, and my wireless is connected to a hub called Travis. So I'm going to start with the wireless. I click here. It's going to do a scan of all the oops, all the wireless hubs in the area, and we see that there's NC Tower and Travis. Well, I'm connected to Travis because it's faster and it's my personal hub. The lock icon means that you have to use a password to get in. So if you don't know the password, you're not going to be able to use it, which means that I'd have to use NC Tower anyway, instead. When we first got to the screen, NC Tower had only two of the three bars. There it is again. It only has two of the three bars highlighted. Whereas Travis has three bars highlighted. That means that the signal coming from Travis is stronger and faster than the one coming from NC Tower. This will change as you move around. For the best signal, you want to, the closer you are, the better. The less walls between you and the hub, the better. And there's, there's other things that affect it. Weather will affect it to some extent. I've heard of cases where a stack of CDs will affect the wireless. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. Notifications. Brightness. Here's where you control the brightness settings of your screen. Now, I have mine set to mild brightness just because I'm doing this recording. And I also have auto brightness turned on. What this means is that as there's a little sensor up here, it's kind of hard to see, on the iPod Touch, it's actually dead center. And what it does is it detects how much light there is in the room. If there's a lot of light, it will make the screen brighter because it's harder to see the screen. If it's dark in the room, it'll make the screen dimmer. Now, if you press and slide back and forth, the screen goes darker, the screen goes lighter. Kind of blows up my camera. I'm going to switch it back to what I had it. There, you know, get it as close as possible, I guess. I'm going to close out of that. All right, a few other things I want to point out real quick. The list here is depending on what you have, where you have an iPod Touch or an iPhone. These are Apple-based settings. Now, in general, now one, one thing that everybody's going to find is down here there's an all lock, passcode lock, and restrictions. Restrictions probably not going to use unless you have a lot of different people, like kids, using it, which you can limit to age group for different applications or whatever. The auto lock says, okay, if I haven't been using the iPhone for two minutes, it's going to lock the phone. Oops. Now the passcode, which I currently have turned off because it's kind of annoying to put up with, is whenever the phone has been idle for an extended period of time, it will lock the phone. And you will have to enter in a four digit passcode in order to get in. And actually with the new operating system, you can use a bigger passcode. Again, I have mine off. It used to be set to after four hours. I'm gonna turn it on. And it's going to ask for a passcode. I'm just going to use 1111. I'm not keeping it. You got to re enter in your passcode 1111. It's going to check it, and now it's locked my phone. So I can say how long between when it locks. I can do it immediately. I can do it after a minute or after up to four hours. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the passcode yeah you can also tell it if somebody tries to access your phone or an iPod 10, 10 times and they fail it's going to erase all the data off of your phone I'm not going to do that I hope mine never disappears I like my phone date time 
when you are on a cell phone tower, it will automatically update your current date and time. If not, most likely it's going to actually go based off what your computer says. Now, if you're traveling somewhere else, you click on time zones. If if time matters to you, otherwise it doesn't actually matter. You can do a search for the time zone you're in, or for a city in that time zone, and it'll pull up that that location and set your time zone to wherever you're at. I'm not going to do it. I like where I'm at. We also have the current date and time. You can set this by hand. Useful if you want to cheat on a few games. Um, again, if time and date don't really matter to you, if you're not using this as a alarm clock, it doesn't matter.